Hey there, guys. Hey, what's up, Slash? Oh, hey, you ready to start the show? Yeah, but we gotta do the rituals first. I don't start the show without the rituals. <sighs> rituals, yeah. yeah. Let's go. Hand sanitizer, it's there for a reason. One in each finger, one there, and one there. We rub, there we go. First ritual, here we go. I'll be done in a minute. Gotta get loose for the show. Let's go, let's go, let's go. What is he doing? His pre-show ritual. He's on four of 37. Start the show. Start the show. No. Start the show. Yes, start the show. Okay, you guys ready in there? Rituals are done. We can start the show. All right. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. I'm your host, Rob Strano, and we've got a great show for you to help your game. Let's bring in our blueprint as always. We're gonna start off this time with strategy. Yes, I'm gonna give you some key things to understand about your golf course and how to figure out how to play the holes. It's a KISS segment after that, and we've got several visits to Swing University with clips we've taped to help your game. We've got a Golf Kingdom Library visit and a viewer quiz that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. And as always, we wind up with the time to rise. Are you ready? Because it's time to build here in the Golf Kingdom. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. We're beginning this golf kingdom with a strategy segment. Yes, the strategy to help your game. And this is indicative of something you're gonna see at every one of your golf courses. I'm gonna help you plot a strategy for your par fours, par fives, and help you understand what are the hardest holes in your course and how do you need to think about playing those? So simply, let's start off with our first little golf hole here. We're gonna look at a par five. This is at the course I grew up at St. Clair Country Club, just outside of St. Louis. This is the par five six hole. You start here, you play across a ravine. This is a big, deep, kind of a grass bunker at the corner. Then you play this way to this bunker in front of the green. It's kind of a cross bunker, but it's a great par five. Now, par fives. You're kind of supposed to take three shots to get there. You gotta plan your three shots. This par five, you may not be able to drive it over this right here, over this big deep grass bunker. So you may need to go over here, and then here, and then here. Plan your three shots. Here's what happens, a lot of times we go, well, I'm gonna hit my biggest tee shot ever, and we try to like drive the green on a par five. That's never gonna happen. I'm guilty of trying to hit too aggressive a shot on a par five and driving it in the rough, and now I can't get home in two. Think about it, it's gonna take you three tour players, it's gonna take us two really good ones. What are your three good ones to go from here to here to here? Maybe it's three five irons, I don't know, but figure out and get a strategy. Now, let's go to our next hole, also at St. Clair, my home course. This is the 17th hole. Green is, our tee is here, it goes out at dog legs left to the green. Once again, a grass bunker here, and giant trees at the corner that you cannot get in the left half of this hole. You get over here, the trees block you and you gotta pitch out. Once again, you can't drive the green on a par four, so you've gotta arrive in two. How do you arrive on this green in two shots? And avoid these trees. Maybe you hit three wood over here and then eight iron on the green. Maybe you hit driver over here in the rough and on the green. Maybe it's an iron or a hybrid out there. But plan a strategy for how to play these holes because they're not always driver off the tee. Par fives, you have to arrive in three. Par fours, we have to arrive in two. Figure out how you're gonna arrive there in two shots. And then stick with that plan, especially at holes that are hard like this that you tend to screw up. Speaking of hard holes, do you know what the hard holes are on your golf course? Well, let me tell you what they are looking at some of the hard holes in the world. Next image, check this out. The 18th at Pebble Beach. It's the last hole of the golf course. The last hole tends to be a really tough one, a really challenging one. Start thinking of all the golf courses you're played and you'll go, man, the 18th hole there was tough. The 18th hole there was tough. Pebble Beach, 18th hole. You got the, 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 the Carmel Bay here, the Pacific Ocean right there. You got to go around it. Next hole, look at this par four. This is the 18th at the TPC Stadium course. Look at this little skinny sliver of fairway and the giant lake and the little itty bitty green. It's a hard hole. Remember, your 18th holes are hard. 
They're going to be tough. Play them smart. Next set of hard holes in your golf course are these. Watch this. These are the, um, actually, no, this is one more par four. This is the 18th at winged foot. Right here, this is where Mickelson screwed it up and lost the U.S. Open. It's a dog leg left around the trees. Really hard hole. One more time. Here we go. These are hard holes. Your par three holes. This is 15 at Cypress Point. And the next one, 16 at Cypress Point. Par threes tend to be hard because they're one shot and one shot only. So they tend to make them tough across the Pacific Ocean or a lake. So keep in mind your hard golf holes. They tend to be the last hole and the par threes of the golf course. You got to get them right, those last holes and those par threes. Well, we've stepped outside the studio for our kiss segment. Mwah. Keep it simple, Strano. Yes, simply we're going to use the hallway to help you set up properly and to get into the ball properly. And one of the errors I see is players will start directly behind the ball and you will walk directly at the ball. Well, in the hallway, you can't now turn and get the club behind the ball. So you have to retreat backwards to do it and you end up going backwards to your heels like this. When we set up properly, we don't walk towards the ball. You'll never see a tour player walk towards the ball and then retreat backwards into the wall. Using your hallway at home, you're gonna get behind the ball, get your target line, see where you're going, and you're gonna go against this wall. You're gonna walk over here, take your grip, you're gonna turn and put both of your cheeks right against this wall. Now, I will come forward into the ball square, set my feet, check my line and be ready to go, and I'll be square and I won't be backing into my heels. So by walking over here, you give yourself room to turn, get square to your target line and get set up. Once again, we don't walk at it because we don't have room. We walk over here, looking at our target, get ourselves square right here. I match the lines on the grout here, my rear end square, now I come in, club goes in, I get square, look at my line, get my posture and I'm ready to swing. Use your hallway at home to learn how to get into the ball and you'll have this kiss. See, keep it simple, Strano tip to help you do it right. Are you ready? It's our Swing University tip. We film these things to help you and today we take you into the trees to help you pitch out of trouble and get it right every time. Oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into here? Oh, I got nothing. I got a bunch of trees in the way here. This would be really dumb to go that way, don't you think? I think so. So now I got to pitch it out. I want to do something smart. I want to pitch out sideways. But how do you do it correctly? Here's the mistake everybody makes when they pitch out sideways. I'm going to pitch out sideways and I'm picturing the ball landing and going over there out in the middle of the fairway. So I see the ball go where I want to go. It's going to finish out there in the middle. So now I swing to the point where the ball is going to land. Oh, sit, 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 stop. Whoa, it's over the hill. Stop. No, I just hit it through the fairway. Give me another one. Tell you what, here's the way to play this correctly. I see where the ball is going to finish in the middle, but it got there by rolling there. If I fly it there, it's going to go too far. So now I'm looking at a spot right here. I want it to land there and let it roll to where I want it to go. So now I'm going to hit it to that spot. There we go. That's going to roll right out in the middle of the fairway. So when you play these shots, figure out where the ball is going to stop, then figure out where it's got to land and roll to get to that spot. And you'll play these pitch outs better and stop blowing it through the fairway. When we think speed, we think about speed tuning every aspect of the new Rogue ST drivers. Really? I just think about smashing it. When we think total power, we think of our tungsten speed cartridge. A what speed cartridge? I don't know, but I like what it does. When we think max distance, we think of... Oh, that's bombed! With our fastest, most stable driver ever, there's only one thing you'll think about. Smoked it. Bombed. See ya. Think speed. Go rogue with Callaway, the kings of distance. Welcome back to the Golf Kingdom, all you fans out there, and it's a fun time. It's our viewer quiz. Everybody loves a quiz, especially a sports quiz that might educate you on something you don't know and give you something that helps your game. I think this is all of the above. I'm going to test your knowledge and see what you know about golf. So everybody, get up. Come on, get in close. Here we go with the first question, and the first question is this. The NBA free throw percentage, swish, 
is 73%. They average 73%. Here's my question. You ready? The question is, what length of putt is 75% on the PGA Tour? So a PGA Tour free throw putt where they make 75% like a free throw, how far away from the hole are they? Are they 10 feet? Are they two feet? Are they nine? What length of putt is their free throw? Let's look at the answer. It's five feet. So it's that far right there, five feet. That's their free throw. That's kind of weird, isn't it? You'd think, man, they'd make 75% of their six or seven footers. But no, from five feet, they make 75%. That means they make three out of four or they miss one out of four, depending on how you look at it. Okay, here we go. Hopefully you all got close on that answer. Question number two, dose, here we go. From 100 yards, PJ Tour players hit the green 90% of the time. So from 100 yards, think about that, the length from goal line to goal line on a football field, they hit the green 90% of the time, true or uh-uh, false. What do you think, is it true or false? 100 yards, it's an easy shot. Don't you think they hit it 100% of the time? I don't know, true or false, do they hit it 90% of the time? What do we got? False, holy smokes, false, and it's worse. They only hit it 83% of the time. That means two out of 10 from 100 yards, they're missing the green. Wow, so when you're out there thinking 100 yards away, you should hit it 100% of the time, you know what? You don't, and they don't either. So manage those expectations when you have that 100-yard shot because it's a lot harder than you think it is if the PGA Tour players are only doing it 83% of the time. Okay, here we go. Third question and last question, it is this. PGA Tour pros hit 75% of their greens in regulation from what distance? 75% from what distance? I'm gonna give you a choice. Here's your three choices. 150, 175, or 200. Get your choices, come on, come on, come on, come on. What is it? 200, 175, 150. What is it not? Oh, it's not 200. We got two choices left. So what's it gonna be? What's the correct answer? 150. So from 150 yards, golly, they're only hitting what percentage? Wow, it's not what you think it is, is it? So focus on these stats, this information. You might lower your expectations and take some pressure off your game knowing what the best in the world do from 150 yards and what they do from 100 yards. Well, it's another visit to the Swing University. Yes, some great tips that we've taped to help your game. And this one's a tip from the tour. Yes, something that happened to me when I played on this right here, the Nationwide Tour. Yes, I'm playing the Wichita Open in Kansas at Willow Bend. The 17th hole is a 205 yard par three and it looks like this. So you tee off from down here and you go up to the green, back bunker and here's where the flag was. Look at the next image. So the flag is kind of back in the right here up on a little ridge, and look where I hit it. Look at the next picture. I hit it in the back left bunker, right back here on the left side of the back bunker, over the green. It's a pretty good shot, hit by the hole and took a bounce over the green, and the ball happened to have something very odd happen to it, and that's where the video is gonna help you. Check it out. Okay, it's Tales from the Tour with me, where I share something that happened when I was out as a touring professional. So I happened to hit it into a bunker just like this, close to the lip, down slope to the flag on the 17th hole. And the week before on tour, we had been moving the rocks out of the bunkers, one of the first times the tour ever allowed the players to do that. But I looked at my hard card and I didn't see that note. So I called for an official and Orlando Pope from the tour came over. I said, Orlando, are we moving rocks this week on tour? He said, no, we're not. I went, great, because I got a rock right behind my ball. And I've got to hit the rock and the ball towards the flag. But I couldn't do that. If I would have swung and tried to hit it at the target, the rock would have hit the ball and the ball could have gone anywhere. So I had to think, how do I hit this shot and make the rock go one way and the ball go another? So here's the trick. I set up sideways, so the target's over here. I set up sideways and swung sideways, making the rock go this way. And remember, the ball's gonna come out sideways where the sand goes. So I open the face wide open. My feet are set this way. I'm trying to go that way, I'm set this way. And I swung sideways as hard as I could to make the ball come out to the right and the rock to the left. It looked like this. The ball comes out dead at the target. Look at this, it might've gone in just like the last time I did it. 
went up there to about six inches. The rock went over here, the ball went over there. So sometimes in the bunker, you got to think really crazy stuff, swing sideways, make the rock go one direction, the ball go another, and you'll be amazed when you mess around like this, some of the great shots you can hit. Ahem, ahem, ahem. Hey, they keep moving this book. Make them stop. Yes, King. Be gone. It's the Golf Kingdom Library. We've got the PJ Tour Vault book. Yes, all the great hidden pictures from the PJ Tour. We're gonna open this up and look at some Tiger Woods pictures to help your game. Let's go. Well, we flipped the pages and guess what? We've arrived on the big cat, Tiger Woods, and we have three of the same image, but they're from different angles. And we're gonna see what we can learn from his finish to help you get it right in your game. Now, we're not all Tiger Woods. We all can't move like Tiger Woods, but there's a couple keys that you can learn from to help you get it right. Now, this first image we got from here is a good one of him finishing the swing. We're kind of looking at him here, he's kind of looking that way, and the key things to notice are this. Notice how his elbows are nice and level, and his hands are together on the grip. He hasn't filleted his hands and elbows apart. Remember, and repeat after me, I can only go where I can go, or I can only swing where I can swing. If you're not flexible, you can't get to that spot. I have a lot of players that try to swing and have these big finishes, and their hands come off the club and their elbows fly apart and their elbows bend and the club smacks them in the rear end as they come through. You gotta understand, you can only go where you can go. And Tiger, that's his finish spot right there. He finishes elbows level. You can see hands on the grip. This elbow, this arm, very parallel to the ground. It's not over bent like this to where the club's laying on him. Very important. Let's flip to the next view here. You're gonna see something very similar as you look at him from this angle. Now. Once again, remember, he's going where he can go. Bad back and all that, he's not gonna overdo this move. He's gonna go where he can stop his swing. So very important, you gotta understand, how do you know where you can stop your swing? Very simple. Grab a ball, stand here, and pretend like you're throwing. Just throwing a ball that way. See what your range of motion's like. Go ahead, no ball, with a ball. Make this move. If you can get to here, hips in this position, shoulders in this position, well, we can finish there. I have a lot of players, they go to throw a ball and they go like this. Hip stop, foot stops. Maybe it's a left leg issue. Maybe it's a hip impingement issue, they can't move. That's gonna be the end of their mobility and your swing is gonna stop somewhere in here. One more image of Tiger, here it comes again. Really interesting angle from here. Now you're gonna really see how he's finishing. What we talked about, elbows are level. He hasn't broken. You can see there's no broken pieces apart, elbows apart. Club way laying down his backside. Club's going this way. He's got the good angles as he comes through of this, this, and this. All those positions help you get it right as you swing through. So in the Golf Kingdom Library, the PJ Tour Vault book, once again, has helped us help you get the finish where it should be when you hit a golf ball. It looks like a blade. It feels like a blade, but it performs unlike any other. The new Odyssey Tri-Hot 5K is a radical departure from traditional thinking. With multi-material construction, a shallow CG, and MOI over 5,000, we've actually made the blade forgiving. The days of sacrificing performance for looks and feel just ended. The new Tri-Hot 5K, it's a blade unlike any other. From Odyssey, the number one putter on tour. Well, I'm off the fairway here, and I appear to have a little bit of an opening, so I think I can play this shot up there. Um, I gotta clear my lie here. I got a, some pine straw, some bits of bark, and some leaves. So first thing I'm gonna do is clear my lie. Now the question is, this shot through the trees. This is pending doom, because you know what? There's trees in the way. When there's trees in the way, there's one thing I want you to think of. Don't hit them. So a lot of times you walk and you go, oh wow, I can hit it through this opening, and you'll grab a lofted club. You go, oh, I can grab a seven iron, I can lean it back in my stance a little bit, lean the shaft forward, and get in there, and you hit it, and it goes up in there, and it's like, oh no, oh shoot, I went 
hits all those trees. I don't care how it gets through there. Trees are unpredictable. If the ball goes through there, you know what? It could hit the tree and go a million different directions. However you get it through the trees, I don't care, but pick a club that will go through there. So instead of seven iron, I'm gonna grab a four iron here because I don't care if it rolls along the ground up there. I want it under the tree limbs, above the ground, and rolling. So I'm gonna look at four iron, hit through my gap, boom, there's a little low one. It wasn't anywhere near the trees, and it's rolling right up there on the green. Think about it, pending doom. Don't hit the trees. Pick a club that'll go above the ground, under the limbs, knock it through there, and go find it and hit it again. Well, I've played a lot of competitive golf. I've seen a lot of competitive golf, and I've coached a lot of players who have competed. And one thing I know about competing is that you have to be loose, you have to be relaxed. Man, if you're tight, it doesn't matter what sport you're playing, a tight football team, a tight basketball team, a tight golfer, a nervous golfer is not the way to compete. You've gotta be loose, you've gotta be relaxed. Same thing when we're on our day-to-day -day lives and our experiences. Man, you wanna be loose, you wanna be relaxed. I always say, my main goal is to help people enjoy golf, have fun doing it, and to make someone's day better. That's my goal. I want to laugh and have fun every day, and we sure have it here in the golf kingdom. But recently, I got to watch a group of guys have fun and play golf. It's these guys right here. This is the Wake Forest University golf team that my buddy Jerry Haas coaches. And the first time I watched them was back in February at a tournament, and I said to them, man, you guys are a loose group when you have fun, and a loose team is a ready-to-go play well team. And one of the guys looked at me and he said, I never thought about that. A loose team is a team ready to go. Yeah. And so these guys played well. In fact, they played so well recently. Check out this picture. The loose team happened to win the ACC championship, and I was there to watch them do it. It was fun to watch all these guys be loose, relaxed, confident, and play well. And coach, here he is right here at the trophy, man. He was a happy coach. His loose team played well. And Jerry, past tour player, he knows the importance of being loose, being relaxed and playing well, and he sure keeps his guys that way. They're sharp, they're ready to go, but man, I watched them walk up to the first tee. They looked ready, but they looked loose and relaxed. So think about that. Try to stay loose, relaxed, ready to go play. Laugh, have a good time, and you know what? Your nerves will go down, and I bet your day-to-day -day life will get better, and your golf will get better too. That was a blast here in the Golf Kingdom. Lots of fun stuff to help your game. Good specific tips to help you improve. Let's go ahead and pull our strand notes in here and review. Right off the bat, we did strategy where I helped you understand your golf course. You gotta know where your hard holes are and you gotta know how to arrive on the par fours and par fives. Next up in KISS, I said use your hallway to walk in and get set up correctly. Yeah, if you use your hallway, you won't end up on the wrong side of the ball when you walked in. And in our swing you segments, I taught you how to get out of trouble, how to pitch out, and how to get through the trees. Now, for more Golf Kingdom, jump out on social media. We're on all the platforms. You can also download the Golf Kingdom app. Yeah, go to your app store, get the app. 
I think it's the greatest app ever in golf, but who am I to say? Just all you tell me that anyway. But there's a daily forum there, all the shows are there, and there's categories, so you can go there and watch strategy. You can go there and watch build it. You can go there and get short game stuff to help your game. Everything is there, you can pick it, watch it, binge watch. I'd binge watch it if I was me, and I am me. So go there and do that, and as always, if you have an Alexa-enabled device, you can say, Alexa, enable the Golf Kingdom, and you'll get the Golf Kingdom skill and a tip from me every day. All you can do is say, Alexa, play the Golf Kingdom. Thanks again for being here with me in the Golf Kingdom. It's not a wrap. It's a sandwich. Oh, it's a sandwich. Ba-dum-bum.